Hi. So we've been making parsing rules to then parse sentences in English, in Japanese, Arabic, and so forth. And when doing this, we are assuming that every sentence is going to have one parse and that everything is just going to have one result. But this is not how human languages work. In human languages, sometimes a sentence can have more than one way that it can be parsed. And this can result in humor. For example, one morning I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I don't know. Here are some more examples. Uh, ban is soliciting dead in Trotwood. Two sisters reunited after 18 years in checkout counter. Two cars were reported stolen by the, Gro by the Grufton police yesterday. Enraged cow injures farmer with axe. <laughs> Uh, I really like Laura's give poor free ad legal advice <laughs> and include your children who are baking cookies. Why are these weird? They are weird because there's more than one way to parse them. For example, in the sentence, two cars were reported stolen by the Grufton police yesterday. Where does the uh, constituent by the Grufton police yesterday go? Does it, is, does it belong to the verb stolen, so that the cars were stolen by the police? Or, as in the first parse here, or, as in the case of the second possible parse, does the constituent by the Grafton police belong to report it? So which verb is the one that has to do with the police? Stolen or report it? Because... Um, there's more than one way to parse this sentence. There's the potential for an ambiguity. So we could have an ambiguous parsing where it could go in one direction or the other. And as we have seen, this can result in humorous results. Like tuna biting off Washington coast. Is the biting a verb or is the biting a noun? Is it biting of tuna or tuna that are doing biting? So because we have to deal with ambiguity, uh, structures are sometimes going to be different. This is the example for the elephant. I shot an elephant in my pajamas. So where does the PP go? Where does the prepositional phrase in my pajamas go? Does it describe the elephant, as in the example on the left, so that it's an elephant in my pajamas? Or is it a sister of the node shot, so that you shot someone how? in my pajamas. What did you shoot? An elephant. How did you shoot it? In my pajamas. Meaning you were wearing your pajamas. Here, again, the note that controls in my pajamas is the, uh, the noun phrase elephant in my pajamas. So it's the elephant wearing your pajamas. If we only have the rules, then there's no way for us to decide which parse is better. However, if we had probabilities, if we could somehow compute the probabilities of one parsing versus the other, then maybe we could uh, have a way to, quant to quantify our intuition that I shot the elephant while I was wearing my pajamas is more likely than I shot the elephant who was wearing my pajamas. The elephant was wearing them. Somehow in our human brains, we have the intuition that the first sentence is more probable than the second one. And we will use probability to try to quantify that um, intuition. Probabilistic parsing is trying to assign probabilities to rules so that then we can calculate the probability of a certain parse. This is an example from a book. Let's say you've collected 10, 50, 100, 1,000 parsed sentences. And then you could try to see how often when you have a sentence, is the next note, is the next series of notes, noun phrase, verb phrase. This happened 80% of the times you had sentence. 15% of the times you had sentence, it then went to auxiliary, noun phrase, verb. And then 5% of the times you had sentence, it went to verb phrase. So out of the 100% of the sentence structures, 80% of the sentences went to NPVP, 15% went to AUX and PVP, and 5% went to VP. And as you can see, it works the same with the rest. For example, um, 
35% of the VPs go to verb, 20% of the VPs go to verb NP, 100% uh, of the prepositional phrases go to preposition, noun phrase, and so forth. And again, you would calculate these numbers by having a very large collection of parses and then figuring out, okay, when I have the rule sentence, how often do I go noun phrase, verb phrase, and how often do I go just verb phrase? How do we calculate the probability of an entire tree? Let's say here we have a, uh, on the left the structure book the dinner flight so that the flight happens at the same time as dinner, during dinner time. On the right, we have the parsing, book the dinner, flight. So that there's someone called the dinner, and you book them a flight, and that is the action that you're doing. Compared to, for example, book Anna a flight, or book Anna food. So let's say that these are the one the probabilities on the left column here are the ones related to this tree and the probabilities here are the ones related to the parser that produced this result how do we calculate the probability of a parsing tree we multiply the probability of each of them in a chain rule like we've been doing so, for example, the probability of a, of a sentence going to a verb phrase is 0 0.05 here. Multiplied by the probability of a verb going, a verb phrase going to a verb and a noun phrase, 0.20. Multiplied by the probability of a noun phrase going to a debt and a nominal, 0.20. Multiplied by the probability of a nominal going to a nominal and a noun. Uh, yes, another 0.20. And so on and so forth. Until finally, the probability of this one. A noun going to flight, 0.4. So as you can see, it's a sequence of this to this, this to this, this to this, this to these two, this to this, this to these two, this to this, this to this, this to this. That is the chain of multiplication. And in the end, we get this number for the probability of this tree based on these rules. Pause the video and try to calculate the probability of this tree using these probabilities, the one in the right column. So it will be a sequence of multiplications of each of the rules that you follow to form the tree. Go ahead and pause the video, please. Hi. So it's the same thing. Uh, this is the probability that a sentence will go to a VP, 0 0.05, and so forth, multiplied by the probability that a VP goes into a verb, a noun phrase, and an NP, which is 0.1, and so forth, which is this probability. And this probability is much smaller, as you can see by an order of magnitude, than this one. So it means that we would prefer this parse because it is more probable than this other one. And this matches our human intuition that this is the probably what the person meant instead of this. So this is how we can use probabilistic parsing to improve our understanding of sentences. Again, how do we get these? We make a tree bank with thousands of sentences and then we calculate the probabilities of the rules. And that's what we use, one of the main things that we use tree banks for. In summary, you can get ambiguous parses uh, from a single sentence. Uh, one sentence can be parsed in more than one way. For example, two cars were reported stolen by the police yesterday. Two cars were reported stolen by the police yesterday. In this one, they were stolen by the police. And in this one, they were reported by the police. Because there's ambiguity, we don't know which one is the more is the preferable parse. If we have a tree bank, we can calculate the probability of the parses and try to decide that one makes more sense than the other. And we call this probabilistic parsing.